guys and welcome to another episode of Your Summerwise. Today we're going to be giving you a very short tutorial on Neptune, on how to log in on Neptune, set up your two-factor authentication, activate your student status and register for courses. So just a little disclaimer, this video is not only for general medicine students or pharmacy or dentistry, it applies to anyone studying at Samwise because we're all using the Neptune system. So it definitely applies to the Faculty of Health Sciences as well, Faculty of Nursing. So anyone, anyone, anyone who studies at Samwise, the rule is the same regardless of your faculty. So make sure you check this tutorial so it will clear things up for you and make things so much easier. So let's dive right in. So first things first, uh, you want to, of course, register for your Neptune. You should have gotten already all the information on how to uh, log in, but here I just wanted to demonstrate. And basically what you have to do is, I strongly recommend you guys to click right away on the English option because it will automatically translate Neptune platform for you. So you don't have to look for a language change on the page itself. So what you do here is you type in your Neptune code. The Neptune code has been already provided for you. Most likely have been already prompted to either create a password or you received a password already. So what you do is you click away, you type in your information. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm of course using mine and uh, we're just gonna continue with this. So you click on login. And for example, for me already, since my two-factor authentication is already installed and already put into place, I no longer have to do a two-factor authentication setup, uh, but here is basically where you type it in. So let's quickly stop by setting up our two-factor authentication and then continue with the login. As you can see here, even before we enter Neptune, there's important information on two-factor authentication. So if you click on that directly, you will see uh, what this two-factor authentication is there for. Um, you can see that it's there to protect your data so that nobody can enter. And because we all know the passwords are not enough to protect you guys. So of course we have the two-factor authentication token that's in place. Um, there's recommendations for which applications to use for the authenticator and for the code generation. You have a few options. You have Microsoft Authenticator or using, for example, on your Apple phone, you can just do it directly through your password settings. It will provide automatic code generation. So after opening the app, you have to basically just click the plus sign. And uh, uh, if you scan the code, uh, the code that will be provided for you uh, as the first time when you sign in, uh, you will basically be able to generate the code. So here, as you can see, you know, the key name will be the name of the institution and the Neptune code of the user. Um, and this is the QR code that you will get for the setup that you will have to scan that will send you directly either to your, let's say, Apple passwords or to your Google Authenticator, where you can scan it through the Google Authenticator and then continue with typing in your password. So your Neptune password and the code that you received through that application. And once that is done, your two-factor authentication is set. Uh, I will just quickly display how I did it for myself after disabling it. So from here on, um, what you basically do is you click setup. The setup will take you to a QR code that you can see right here. Um, you basically have to just scan it. So scan it with your phone. It will immediately take you to the page where you have to, you know, set it up. Uh, once you do that and you have everything set up, all you have to do is just type in the code, type in your password and just click set up and it's going to be on. As you can see for me, I disabled it and enabled it again and it works. So going back to our login page, you type in your login, your Neptune code, your password, your two-factor authentication window pops up. All you have to do is get the code, copy the code or type it in and enter. And you are on Neptune. Let's move on to the next thing on our agenda today. Um, so the next thing is, of course, activating your student status and registering for courses. So the first thing you do after you have logged in, you click administration, you go to 
uh, enrollment and registration. And here, as you can see, uh, for me, because I've already been in uh, med school for quite some time at Semmelweis, so you can see I have quite a few uh, admission years and terms activated. So basically, as you can see, year 25, 26, and 1 uh, has a status new. This is something that you guys will see as well. So it's the same thing, it says year 25, 26, first semester. And what you basically have to do here is change the status. So as you can see here, uh, some of mine are wore out activated before. What you would have to do, click the plus button, go to change status and activate your semester. It's as simple as that. And you're all set for registering for your subjects. Let's move to the fun part, so registering for your subjects. So what you do after you've activated your student status, you go to subjects, you go to register for subject. And once you click that, this window will pop up showing you what is your term. So this is an important part that you have to really pay attention to when registering for classes and for ease of searching. You have to make sure that the term selected is the term that you're going to be taking the classes in. So for example, in the upcoming semester, the term should be 25, 26, 1. 1 standing for first semester. Number 2 basically means the second semester. And as you can see for an example right here, this is for 1 and the previous one for the second semester. Once you've done that, then you have options subjects from curriculum and other elective subjects. First things first, click subjects from the curriculum. And after that, make sure you click list the subjects because these will be the subjects of the curriculum that you have to take, absolutely have to take. They are the mandatory subject. They will be listed right here and the electives you can do later. Click list, go a little bit down. And as you can see here, they're uh, already listed. And I think the easiest way to go about this is to click recommended term, which will sort your subjects by the year, which I think makes it so much easier to find them. Of course, still always refer back to your curriculum and to your yearbook, but this makes it easier. So how do you select the subject and how do you register for it? First things first, you do is you pick the subject. It can be anything from your curriculum, but you have to go, you know, just make sure you have all of them. There's no particular order in which you have to register. So let's say we pick whichever, let's say cell science. So we click cell science and the way you do it, you click the name of the subject, then you are going to be taken to this window. And in this window, you can see a bunch of numbers. So the numbers like 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, they basically stand for your group. So you have to make sure you check mark which group you are in. So for example, if you're group two, you check mark zero two. Uh, zero zero stands for a theoretical course. So that's your lecture course. For subjects that have both uh, theory and practical classes, you have to make sure you select both the zero zero and then the course corresponding to your group. So for example, if you're in, let's say EM four, then you have to make sure you select zero four. If you are in uh, group five, you select zero five and so on. So you click save. I cannot do it right now because obviously it's not going to let me register. It's not registration time and not the subjects that I am valid for registering for as well. And uh, so you do not need to click anything else like add to class schedule. You just move on. Then let's say physical education. That is only a practical course. So there's no theory course involved in that. So no need to click this. Um, let's give another example. So let's say we do uh, biophysics. So again, you pick your group and then you pick the theoretical course. And this is very important because for these subjects, not selecting the group is going to be a problem. Also make sure to always select the same group because you want to be with the same group that is mandatory. So if let's say you are assigned to group five, you stay with your group five throughout, unless you change your group, which um, can be done, but I don't think that's important, at least not for now. For elective subjects, we do the same. We click other elective subjects and they will be automatically listed. You can select pretty much any one of them uh, for a few exceptions. So always pay attention to which subject you select and what is written under them. Some of the elective subjects have prerequisites, not all of them. Uh, and also important thing to pay attention to is uh, the fact that sometimes there is two separate ones and they're going to be led by different professors, maybe on different days, which will also usually be listed under either class schedule information or the description. Um, so always make sure you check that just to make sure it does not clash uh, because some of these electives can be at the time when your other class takes place. 
So here, for example, uh, we have introduction to Italian. As you can see, also pay attention for language courses, what level it is, because if it's going to be too hard for you, you might not be able to pass the course. Uh, for example, Art of Learning, you can see here, it even tells you on which day it takes place. Here it's on Monday, so you can already, after registering for your main subjects, you can check, can you take the selective or not? And here, as you can see, make sure here in this example, EM is for English Medicine, DM is for Dentistry. Moving on, let's check a few other ones. So um, another important thing to pay attention to uh, when selecting these courses is finding something that is going to be taught in the language that you need. So some of these classes actually are taught in a different language. So what happened to me uh, by accident and uh, me not paying attention to it was that the course was actually taught in a different language. So here Russian is taught in English and you can see it's A1 to A2, so that's fine. But if for example, here, for example, German is taught in Hungarian. So if you take this course and I did, and it was taught fully in Hungarian, so it was a bit confusing. Luckily my Hungarian at the time was already good enough to be able to do that and by the way this is I think the course I took as well um, so it was German taught in Hungarian so in case if you're not good with Hungarian maybe don't do that uh, so it's gonna be pretty tough that's another example also taught in Hungarian um, and then this one is taught for example in English so you can see also it's on Mondays from 6 so that's important things these are some like you know the things that you should really pay attention to also pay attention to the headcount so courses um, like for example healthcare management has 40 people so the limit is a bit bigger so there's a higher chance you can get a spot um, art for learning for example that one is only seven so it's probably going to be a little more competitive if some people are interested so you might have a harder time finding it so at the end of the day, you know, this is going to be it. You're going to have fulfilled already your registration for the subjects from curriculum, for the subjects from electives. Now we are on to the class schedule. Here, you do not need to do anything. The courses will be put automatically in your class schedule after you register for them and after they've been solidified. So if you move directly to September, this is where you will see all your classes. Everything is going to be here. You will be able to see if there's any clashes. Usually the system does not allow for this to happen. So this shouldn't be an issue, shouldn't be the case. Uh, but then again, it's always up to you. Always check your classes. Make sure there's nothing wrong with the system because at the end of the day, it will be you responsible for it.